This episode of the Friends of Beauty podcast is sponsored by Buddy Love Delights. Buddy Love Delights is a health and wellness company that specializes in the cannabis infusion of drinks, food, and desserts. They provide CBD products for clients strictly looking for the healing and medicinal qualities of the hemp plant, and they also provide THC for clients who desire a top-notch euphoric experience with cannabis. Buddy Love Delights products are all natural, made with organic ingredients, and most importantly, made with love. You can contact them directly via call or text at 202-471-9838 or send them a DM on Instagram at Buddy Love Delights. Make sure you tell them that I sent you. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the 111th episode of the Friends in Beauty podcast. Enjoy! So that's why I believe in the power of networking, events like this. And then in 2020, I wanted to go on like a whole like 14 city tour. Y'all, I have no idea how I was going to do it. I still don't even know. I had 14 cities lined up to go on tour with the events because I had a good like five events here in the DMV area. And people were, when you come to my city, I want to come, blah, 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 blah. So I was going to go on tour and then the panorama happened. And that was that. So this is actually my first event since the pandemic. We literally had our last event March 15th, and then everything shut down on March 16th. So this is like a really big deal for me because I've really been itching to get back out and network and everything. But because I wasn't able to get out and network, I was like, "Mm, you've been wanting to do a podcast and everything like that. Why don't you just start your podcast? So I started my podcast May 5th, 2020. And I'm going to clarify, because I know my girl Dayana was like, but no, you've been doing this for two years. I'm like, it's not two years yet. She's like, but the, the, the math ain't mathing. <laughs> the math ain't mathing. You did how many episodes? But I had to tell her, like, girl, I released five episodes when I first launched. So May 5th, 2020 is when I actually launched the Friends of Beauty podcast. And I never even thought about getting to this milestone for real. It was just literally like, I want to remain consistent And sometimes on the podcast, you might hear me say, I can't believe this is episode whatever. Like, this is episode whatever. And what that means to me is, like, I've literally been consistent with something for 111 weeks. Like, because I haven't missed an episode yet. So, and I really, really enjoy enjoy doing this a lot. So, I plan to go on the road with it, all that good stuff. Do I need to tell y'all about me? Y'all know me, right? Y'all know me. Y'all know me though. <laughs> Y'all know me. 
And she's like, tell us again. So if you don't know, I think I'm pretty familiar with most of the people in here, but my name is Aquia Robinson. I'm a makeup artist, a Thank beauty you. educator, and now the host of the Friends of Beauty podcast. Wow. I've been doing makeup for nine years, which is insane to me. <laughs> I can't believe it's been nine years, but I've had countless opportunities um, just from being in the beauty industry, from working the Bad Boy Reunion concert with Total, that was dope as I don't know what, going on a one month stint in San Francisco to work on a play, loving hip hop, New York, Atlanta, Real Housewives of Potomac, so many things, even Ready to Love that just was here in DC. Literally everything has come from networking. I can't even say that I put an application in or I was interested in something. It was literally, I met somebody, they, they thought about me because I'm a nice person, I guess. <laughs> so um, I don't want to talk too much because I want to like get into these conversations and everything. Um, this is kind of like organic for me. I don't really have like a tight, like, you know, we just going to vibe and we just going to make it happen. So definitely I want to shout out, before we get started, I definitely want to shout out our sponsors, House of Uni, Face Front Skin, Buddy Love Delights, Thank you so much for <laughs> contributing to this event. Like, really, really blew me away with the generosity that they had um, for, for just believing in what I'm doing and everything. It really means a lot. Also, make sure you check out my girl, Kane over there, Zipporah the Sits. Kane is a friend in beauty as well. Kane is a model. Me and Kane have worked together, I don't even know how many times, um, but Kane is an amazing model, and her, her, her brand is amazing. Um, who else? Who else do I need to shout out? Definitely um, Sassy Settings. She did the decor, so make sure you follow her on Instagram at Sassy Settings. She's amazing. And I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Blame it on my head, not my heart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so first what we're going to do, we're going to bring up my friend in beauty, Keisha Taylor, okay? I have to bring to read her bio for y'all, so bear with me because Keisha is just so fire. She's so fire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up Keisha. So Keisha is the founder, CEO, and franchiser of Browse and Company, and the host of Black Girls Blade podcast. Keisha has been in the beauty industry for over 15 years, starting her career as a beauty esthetician in Maryland. Keisha's brow journey started in the early 2000s when she took her first master brow sculpting course with eyebrow king Damone Roberts, as well as running brows and company out of multiple locations and franchising, okay, franchising the company. <laughs> yes. Keisha is also an expert trainer and since 2017 has helped over 800 women build their beauty businesses and permanent makeup through her beginner and advanced courses and micro -blading. Um, microblading, machine strokes, and ombre powder brows. Keisha's also a beauty, a beauty business coach specializing in helping clients with le leveraging local SEO to build their clientele. So I want you all to give a round of applause and welcome Keisha Taylor to the Friends of Beauty guest chair. I want to do like what? a quick, quick giveaway before we start. I totally forgot. I want to do a quick okay. giveaway. Um, because something was going on with the tickets. I didn't realize that y'all didn't have like two sides. But I want to do like a trivia giveaway. I'm going to think of some like really good questions to like do a trivia giveaway. So, before we get started with Keisha, does anybody know who is the only person so far to be on the Friends of Beauty podcast twice? I got a juicy prize. Yeah. Who is the only person to be on the Friends of Beauty podcast? Do you know Keisha? Do you know? I don't. You don't know? Let me think. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Oh, maybe me. Who said this, this, is this is my second Nia time. said it. Yes. yes. <laughs> Nia said it. So come here, Nia. I got something for you. My name is even Donald. Let me see. Let me see. Keisha didn't even know. She was like, is it me? 
to be on the Friends of Beauty podcast twice because a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, episode 105 actually, she was on the podcast with the Black Micropigmentation Association. She's part founder of it. So I interviewed those ladies and it was an amazing interview. Like people loved it. It was a lot of fun, right? Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here, Keisha. You are welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So, as you know, if you listen to the Friends of Beauty podcast, I always like to start off with icebreakers to get okay. us warmed up and everything. Right, so, we're going to do it again. All right. <laughs> All right. So, just give us three random facts about you. Okay. Three random facts is I roller skate. Um, I have a degree in graphic design, and um, I'm just a computer nerd. Okay. Those are three random facts. Okay. <laughs> and you know about the pod decks. Ah, okay. If y'all <laughs> listen to the Friends of Beauty podcast, this is what the pod decks look like. My sister, Adjua. Hey, this is my sister. She got these for me. It's like two other decks that correspond with this, but she got these for me for the holidays one year, and I absolutely love them. So, what the heck, or would you rather? Okay, let me do. I did what the heck the last time, so let's do. Would, would you, you rather? rather? Yeah. And what's so exciting is you get to pick the card yourself. I like to pick it for you. What's the question? You say, I'm scared. <laughs> These questions be so weird, Think y'all. every inanimate object you see or be licked by every living thing you see. Okay, which one is it? Ew, man. Okay, um, I rather be licked by every living yeah. <laughs> thing. You'd rather be licked into yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. You know, what you licking? No judgment. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> No judgment. That's not a good choice, but you know, hey, I had to pick the best one. Okay. Yeah. Next one is a question I love asking because people get so stumped, and I'm realizing that we need to get out more. Like, especially since the pandemic, we actually need to get out more and have more experiences. So, when is the last time you did something for the first time? Oh, remember I was saying that like I would have slid like into the ocean, yeah. and I was. I was so scared because I don't know how to swim. You know, that's so sad. You know, some black people just don't want to get their hair wet. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't care about getting my hair wet, but I was worried, like, because it was thing rigs and stuff, and, like, floating oh, around. Gosh. So once I, like, got off the water slide, I was, like, telling my boyfriend, come and get me, come and get me, because they're going to get the hair product. They're going to smell it, and they're going to come. And, like, and I started seeing, like, some fish come, and that was, like, that is so funny. Now they go get the hair product. Because you know how you have hairspray in your hand when you go into the ocean. It was probably just me. Like, oh my God. Like, a shark is going to come get you. Um, he was like, nothing's going to get you. I was like, they're coming. They're coming. It wasn't nothing coming. I love that. Oh my God. Last one. If you weren't the CEO or franchiser of Browsing Company, what else could you see yourself doing? Oh my God. I would probably be like, I don't know, some kind of big time person with Google. Like Google is like everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be like working for Google, probably having all my business suit, coming into the office, telling people how to do SEO. This is what you do. Yes, I yeah. love it. Okay. So she's basically <laughs> saying she will still be a boss. Yeah. 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 Nothing will change. Yeah, I'll just be working for, well, I don't know, man. Cause I don't like working for nobody. But it's if a, I had to, it's it an Aquarius thing. Or it's an Aquarius thing. Might probably. Yeah. Yeah. Any more Aquarius? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Woo. yeah. Woo. Hey. Got our own little tribe. Okay. <laughs> okay. We we'll see y'all. Yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. I would want to know, like, how was Europe? Because Keisha just got back from Europe. You can tell us all about it. What were you doing over there? Oh, I was speaking at the Professional Beauty Conference. I was speaking on black skin um, one day. So I was speaking on black micropigmentation. And then the second day, I was speaking on SEO. And um, it was an amazing experience. It was? Yeah, it was. Were you nervous at all? I was. But I didn't care. You know how you're nervous, but you have to do it, so you really don't care. I mean, what, what are you going to say, no? If somebody tell you, okay, come to London, I want, what are you going to say, no? Right. Yeah, I was like, okay, I'm there. All right, well, get yourself to 
together. I was okay until I got right up to the point to speak. And I was telling one of my students in the back, like, the Uber driver got lost. And we arrived one minute before showtime. So it was enough to kick off our tennis shoes and put on our heels. And then we had to run up to the front. And I'm like, oh, yes. And everything I practiced for just kind of went out the door. So I had to like freestyle it. But it, it was good. It was good. I love yeah. that. I know a little bit about your background. Mm -hmm. You shared on episode 105 that you have a background in graphic design. Yes. How does someone go from a background in graphic design? <laughs> and I, I kind of know the answer because I have a techie background too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. But how do you go from graphic design to doing brows and then franchising the whole brow company? Okay. So I've always been interested in beauty and I was in publication design. So I was always into magazines. Uh, for you guys who are young, you probably don't know when Honey Magazine was out, that was like the magazine I wanted to work for. So I was like, well, I'm going to school for graphic design because I'm gonna get a job at Honey Magazine and that's gonna be that. And then when I graduated, the magazine industry kind of like went away. So it was like, okay, well, what do I do now? So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna get my master's in publication design and that's that. So I was in graphic design because that's all there was here. Um, and so, but my focus was publication design. And I just, when I graduated, I was like, okay, I don't wanna do that. Like, and I just didn't. <laughs> and so I always been interested in beauty. I always done brows. I used to do brows out of my car um, at age 15. And I just, I still do my own brows. I don't let nobody touch my brows. I don't, I even, you know. Yeah. What, what did I say to you when you were doing I makeup? Know. I was like, I'm not doing that. I forgot to share that. So the way yes. me and Keisha actually met is Keisha is one of our clients. Yes. That's how we met. So I had to do her makeup for, you were having like a gala for uh -huh. your students yep. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I've literally been itching to have this conversation. I was like sitting in the chair, like, I gotta get her on the podcast. Like I don't even know if she knows, but she about to go on the podcast. Yes. Yeah. And so I just always did brows. Like I always had a skill for art. I always knew how to draw. Um, so that was one of my strong points. And I could look at buildings and kind of flip them upside down like and just knew what I wanted to do. A lot of people don't know that story so you guys are the first. Um, and I was always into perspective drawing and stuff like that. Um, and so I just turned it into beauty and I was like everything I said I was going to do I made sure that I did it whether it failed or not. So I was like I'm going to own a spa. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take aesthetics. I'm gonna, and I went through so many things. Like I've been through so many courses. Um, so many things, but one thing I can say is I completed the mission. Like, always complete the mission, never give up. And I just kept taking beauty to the next level. Like, I kept just doing it and doing it. And I was like, you know what, I can help people. So now I'm gonna teach classes. So, you know, I have some students in the back. <laughs> and now I'm like, okay, well now that I have my students, I'm like, I can help women build their beauty business. Like, just give it to them in a box. And so I was like, I'm franchising my business. So it took a long time to build the reputation because you want to build the reputation and just kind of have everything in place. Um, it took me one year to go through like the full process. Um, so it was very like stressful, but in the midst of everything, like I'm grateful and I'm grateful that I can offer the opportunity um, for women, and not just women, but black women, because I'm on a mission, like, that's my mission. So I travel country to country to help women move forward in their beauty businesses. I love that, yes. Can you share a little, since you talked about the mission, can you share a little bit about what you do with the Black Micropigmentation Association? Sure, it's to support black artists in micropigmentation because as you know, as it, well, I don't know what field you guys are in, but in the beauty industry, like, it's like we always fall behind. Like, black people, black women, we always fall behind in, um, Makeup and like aesthetics is probably a little more advanced than permanent makeup. So permanent makeup is pretty much an industry where they don't want black people in, like they just don't. Uh, when they call on us to speak, 
they only call in one of us to speak, and it's just about black skin, and we're educated in all skin. Um, so our goal is to fight for artists and fight for artists' rights and uh, fight for legislation and, and help black artists get recognized in the beauty industry. Oh man, I love that. I love that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. There's this misconception sometimes that when you get to a certain level in business that you don't have any problems. What kind of challenges do you face now in your business versus like when you first started? Like there's levels to it. Oh yeah, you always have problems. You always have challenges. You just have to, the difference is you just learn how to push fast. So like um, nothing really bothers me anymore. It's like, okay, well, well all right, they quit, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, I had to step in, so you know, or you know, they didn't like me, so I don't really care. Um, you know, whereas in the beginning, you care who like you, you care who see you, you care who, you know, now I just don't care. I'm just doing me and I'm helping people and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and so I really don't look back and I don't think about what people think anymore because mm -hmm. that's not my problem, that's on them. Yeah, how long did it take you to get to that point? Oh, it, it took me like about a year, is <laughs> it real quick? Okay. When I was like, oh, you know, I really don't care. I don't care who's doing what I'm doing. More power to you. I, I wish you luck. You know, I I love supporting people. I don't care if you're a business coach or you're doing the same thing. I will highlight you and respect you as mm -hmm. long as you respect me. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. It's all about collaboration at the yeah. end of the day. Collaboration, Definitely. uplifting other people. Um, I've never seen anybody get too far that's like catty or like cause word travels fast. It's a, I don't even know how to say this. The beauty industry is big, but it's not. Yeah. It's big, but it's small enough for people to be like, oh, don't talk to Keisha no more because she she was late. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah. and then word is like, like a wildfire. Yeah. Yeah, I hope I don't have, like, people, well, if people are saying that, they're lying. I'm, I'm just giving an example. <laughs> I'm just giving I'm an example. I'm back here chit-chatting with my students, so they're lying. <laughs> um, you, I never get too big for anybody. Like, someone can stop me off the street and ask me a question, and I will sit there and take the time. Someone can text me. You know, I get it all the time. They may have took like another course or maybe I got in a service from someone else and I still take the time out to talk to them um, because it's the only right thing to do. Yeah, so. I love that. I would love to know because when you all were on the show, mm -hmm. you already know my wheels were turning. I was like, I'm about to throw in these brushes, y'all. Like, I'm about to start doing <laughs> permanent makeup. Like, I don't know about this, you know, the stuff that they wash off and stuff. Like, what, what are, like, not the earning potential, but what are some other ways that brow artists can, like, make money aside from, not brow artists, but, like, permanent makeup? What, like, what all goes into it? Because oh. a lot of people don't even know. When I mention, like, um, what y'all do? Microblading. Mm -hmm. A lot of people still don't know what microblading is, and I have to, like, explain to them what it is. And that. Oh, but really? what exactly okay, is okay. permanent makeup? Like, what the coins looking like? Like, yes. all Okay, well, the coins are good, but, but, you have to put in the work. So my students will tell you back there, you have to put in the work. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that it's overnight because it's not. Um, it was quick for me. Like I was able to scale my business in three months. Um, so I was able to make six figures in, in less than three months because I'm that type of person. So you have to have the mindset. If you have a negative mindset, you're not gonna move forward. So mindset is everything for everything. Um, so the coins are good. That's, that's not even, I mean, I don't, that's, everybody know that the coins are good. I mean, one client off the break is $500 on the low end and maybe 1,000 on the high end. Um, so that's like one, two and a half to three hour session. Um, so, the coins are good, but again, you have to have proper training. I don't want to stress that, you know, you can just go out here and get it done. You have to be trained properly. You can't just be going in here tattooing people's skin or just be like, oh, oh, oh I'm going to do the brows because, you know, they make six figures. Okay, all right. This because your reputation guy. will get ruined real quick. <laughs> then you won't get no clients. Um, so there's still some big-headed people here in the industry, um, but you know, if you take your time, you get proper training, take your time, 
Um, work on your skill set and work on your business because you have to work on your business in order to not be hustling all the time because you don't, you know, permanent makeup artists, we work one, two days a week, we good. You don't ever have to work, you don't have to work seven days, um, but you have to get to that point and it requires a lot of work. I love that, oh my gosh. So I know that one of your superpowers that you talk about all the time is SEO. Yes. So I would love for you to speak on it because it's not something that I hear a lot of people talk about mm -hmm. when it comes to um, their businesses and getting recognized on like Google and like Google searches and stuff like that. So what exactly is SEO and how can we use it in our businesses to like benefit us? Okay, so SEO of course is search engine optimization. And as a beauty pro or just a person with a business with a location, you should be using it. Um, first and foremost, if you, first and foremost, actually, like one of my partners said this in London. She was like, social media is not king. And I came on after her and was like, but Google is. Um, because Google is king. And when people get off of social media, what do you think they do? They're Googling you. And so if you don't, first, you need to have a website. So if you don't have a website, you can, you can forget about it. I know people teach uh, different strategies, but my students, was, <laughs> Tequoia will tell you right there, like, you gotta have a website. I'm not gonna talk, if you say, Keisha, I can't get any clients, I'm gonna say, well, do you have a website? If you say no, I'm gonna say, that's why. Um, because I teach you how to build your business offline. So you can't, like, I'm not gonna teach you social media. I'm not very social myself. <laughs> So I'm gonna teach you what I do know. And SEO is a long-term process. It's not overnight. You have to start it from the beginning. You have to nurture it. It's like a relationship. The more you give to Google, the more you get back. At the end of the day, Google is a business. And they need your business. So you have to feed that relationship something in order to get something back. So you're not just gonna show up on Google. Um, not gonna happen. You can open your business put your website up, but you have to give Google content. You have to give them keywords. You have to show up. Um, so SEO has always been my passion. I was always like lucky enough to understand it. Um, so now I'm just teaching people really how to uh, maximize local visibility, especially when you have a location. Right. So are these keywords like on your website? That you're using? You know, I'll give a tip for some people who don't know. Like, one tip is images. Like, you need to have your own images. Throw away the stock photography and, and keep it moving. Um, again, my students in the back will tell you that they have to do a photo shoot. Like, when you leave my class, you have to do your photo shoot. You have to have your own images. And for images, you need to name your images according to what you do locally. So if you do hair or you do makeup in the DMV, your images need to be named that. Makeup in the DMV by such and such, dash by such and such. Don't have 156112.jp. That's not helping you. Um, that will never get you um, in a top rank search of Google. So name your images according to what you do in your local search. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes are big because I never realized that's my that favorite tip. Yeah. Naming the images mattered. Because I always delete it. No, you gotta name your images. I always delete it because I never really saved them as like it's always like the person's name. Mm -hmm. I've never saved it as like something. Yeah, you always have to name your images so it's that something dash dmv dash va dot md that's everything so you have every uh where you're trying to show up you need to name those images so that's like one of my favorite tips that's uh very very missed in yes. the industry i love that because i'm very i'm very techy so i can get it like i'm, yeah. I'm about so to get it all my images on my yes. website yeah. i love it oh that's, my gosh. that's one way of getting your website right Okay. Did y'all like that term? Yeah. Did y'all know that before? That's an easy one. Everybody can do that. Just go pull up your images and name them what you do dash the city and state that you're in. And go make six figures. Five. <laughs> <laughs> That's, of course, we'll say more than that, but I love that too. Yeah. What I really, really wanted to talk to you about is when you told me that you were franchising yes. the business, mm -hmm. I don't know anybody that's ever done that. 
Really? And I feel like I'm like so blessed to know you. Oh, thank like, you. Like seriously, I don't know anybody that's ever franchised their business. I know people who have bought franchises before, mm -hmm. but for somebody to franchise their business, I feel like that's just like a like a boss move. Like what what does it take to do that? Like what's the back end of franchising a business? A lot. Like? Your business needs to be in the position to franchise, so you need to, your taxes need to be paid. <laughs> You know, first and foremost, you definitely need to take care of the back end of your business. Um, your business have to have a reputation because if your business don't have a reputation, who's going to buy your business? Um, and you just need to have a good name for yourself. You have to have marketing in place. You have to have everything in place. So because uh, the franchisee need to have a business ready to go. So once they pay, the business is ready to go. Just like McDonald's or Chick-fil-A, when they step in, people know them. You know, they know Chick-fil-A, they don't need to know this and that. They go to that Chick-fil-A that's, you know, in Capitol Heights, well, I didn't mean in Capitol Heights, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I think it's one in Lardo. Yeah. Yeah, like mm -hmm. you just go to that one because it's based on the reputation. Like people don't really care with who owns that Chick-fil-A or whatever is based on the reputation. So you need to make sure that the reputation is right. You need to make sure that your financials are in place and just everything in the back end. Nice. Yeah. So if someone in the room wanted to get a piece of the browsing company franchise, like mm -hmm. how, how would they go about getting their own? Yeah, they can just go to www.browsingcompany.com. Just click on the franchise link. And the salespeople will be giving you a call. I don't give you a call. You are welcome to reach out to me and I'll forward your information. Um, but again, it's a business and I have to step back. I can't handle everything. Um, so I have people who handle that part for me. Nice. Yeah. So the franchise, last year, I'm just so curious. And so the franchise, <laughs> is it for the actual service or for the academy? It's for the service. I have not franchised the academy. Um, I'm still like in control of the academy because I love working with students. I love um, building students up and taking them to the next level. Um, so I have not franchised that part out yet. So it's just for the services. Mm -hmm. One thing I love about Keisha, she's just so cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I got salespeople. They can call Stop me. It, girl. <laughs> Salespeople will call you. I ain't gonna call you. <laughs> One thing I love about Keisha is like, you're so fabulous. Thank you. And last time that we talked, we talked a little bit about like the work life balance mm -hmm. of not always just hustling all the time. Like, mm -hmm. it is a certain time that you have to like hustle in your business. Mm -hmm. But when did you decide to kind of like, when did you know it was time to kind of like step back and just take as some more time? As soon as I got started, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna be doing this for 10 years. <laughs> like, it has to be something. No. Um, after one year, I, well, I always, because I'm one of those type of people, so I always knew that I was going to take my business to the next level. Like, I had an agenda. I was like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. And it's no information on, you know, black skin. So I'm tired of people telling me, that's the thing. People was telling me you couldn't do permanent makeup on black skin. And I'm like, but I do it all the time. Like, who are they to tell me? And they're like, well, you're not supposed to. Well, who are you to tell me who I can do permanent makeup on? If it's working, I'm going to do it. And they just continue and continue. And so I was like, well, I'm going to teach people my way. And that's how I ended up opening my academy and having students. Yes. So don't listen. Don't listen to people. They don't know what they're talking about. If you believe in something strongly, keep moving forward. Yeah, listen to those who are doing it, not those who are not doing it. So you want me to listen to you say don't do black skin, but you know, you're not doing black skin. So, yeah. I love that. Oh my gosh. So Keisha, at the end of the day, when this is all said and done, mm -hmm. what do you want your legacy to be? I love asking this question. Ah, man, um, I want to be all over the world, which I started already. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in November, I trained, in, trained women in Nigeria. Um, so that was exciting for me. Um, so definitely branching out all over the world and training women all over the world. That's, that's my legacy. And my main focus is black women all over the world. Oh my gosh. Yes. 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 Yes.
All right, so you know how this works. Before I let you go, I have to ask you the Friends of Beauty rapid fire questions. Okay. So whatever comes to your mind first, just spit it out. All right. What are the top three keys to your success so far? Patience, consistency, and sacrifice. Patience, consistency, and sacrifice. Okay. How do you measure your success? I measure it by the students that I have that's out here doing what I taught them to do. Um, and it's nothing greater than that. Mm -hmm. What's the best advice you've ever received? Um, to never look back and just keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. And that's <laughs> <laughs> Advice was from my son. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going forward. I didn't even know you had a grown son. I know. I, saw I, know. I know. I was like, she looking at him. <laughs> How old is your son? I'm just joking. <laughs> but I have to be like, well, how are you looking at him? He's grown. <laughs> seen your daughter, it sounds like yeah. a grown son. Okay, yeah, he's grown. Um, yeah. What advice would you give to a brow artist who is ready to go to the next level in their business? Just do it. Don't worry about it. You can you can figure all of that out later. Like really, you can. Like don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, don't find ways to not do it. If you want to do it, just do it. Like, why are you finding ways to not do it? Just do it. Like, it's not going to hurt you. What the worst you can do is fail, and you learn from failure. So, absolutely, it's a win-win. Yes. Um, what's a resource that helps you in your business that you can share with the friends and beauty community? Oh, resource. I have partners, so coaches. Business coaches, oh my god, I cannot do this without having a business coach. Um, I, yes, I'm a coach myself, and people lean on me, but I have to lean on somebody too. Mm -hmm. um, so I have business coaches, I read a whole lot. Like, you know, I'm never too busy. I'm never too busy. I love to read, and I'm always learning, I'm always taking classes. Like, yeah, you, you're never too good to not take a class. So, yeah, that's, my, that's what I do. Okay. <laughs> and the last one, I want you to fill in the blank and just say, my name is blank. And the key to longevity and success, of course, in the beauty industry, entrepreneurship, is okay. whatever you think it is. <laughs> my name is Keisha, and the key to longevity and success is to put yourself out there. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's, it. That's the secret. Let's put yourself out there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Keisha. You're this was amazing. Yeah, thanks for having me. I love listening back to the episodes because I don't even know what I just said. That's okay. I love I can't wait to sit back and learn. I know Tayana's on this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, Melissa. I'll be reading it. Like, I read everybody's stuff because have to learn from different people so you know I can't wait to sit in the back and learn from the others that yes. speak. So. Before you go share your social media information and how you want people yes. to connect with you. Sure you can follow me at Browsing Company on Instagram or online at www.browsingcompany.com Awesome. Y'all give it up for Keisha. Because you know, when I have them on the podcast, I would talk to, I'd be like, I, before we start, I'd be like, how much time you got? Because <laughs> if, they, if they tell me they don't have a time limit, we just talk. So I like these little bite sized conversations. Some people are like, oh, girl, I only got an hour. I'm like, okay, I guess we can talk for an hour. Because I'll talk to you for an hour and a half and just keep asking questions, asking questions because. This is not only for y'all, it's for me too. I just learned a whole thing about SEO that I had no idea about. So, I feel like she said coaches are very, very important. If you want to get coached on something, start a podcast. Start a podcast, because I'm kind of like cheating a little bit. I'm like, this is great information for y'all, but I'm learning as well. So thank you so much, Keisha, for that information that you just shared. Let me bring out my notes really, really quick, because 
I want to remind you all too that if you're you know doing anything for social media tonight, of course tag me at Aquia Robinson, tag Friends in Beauty, use the hashtag Friends in Beauty and F I B one one one. This one eleven is like a, I don't know if you all are into angel numbers, but this one 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 signifies like a new beginning. And it's really this piece of me that really feels like this is the start of something. I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is. And I'm learning how to just kind of let things just happen instead of like trying to be in control of everything all the time. But I really have a big, I have a feeling like this, something is about to happen as it pertains to this. So it's really such an honor. I just want to take the time to just say thank you again. It really is such an honor to have you all here and really be a part of like history in the making. I know I keep saying that, but y'all gonna see. Y'all be like, I was at her first podcast and I'm like, I remember everybody that was in here. Y'all gonna say it one day. This episode of the Friends of Beauty podcast is brought to you by House of Uni, who wants you to be your own kind of beautiful. Inspired by the Caribbean, House of Uni is your passport to paradise through a tube of lipstick and candles. With premium quality products, excellent customer service and an array of colors what's not to love i'm actually wearing the shade tobago today and i absolutely love it watch this no transfer okay kissable kissable lips okay after all you're a goddess i'm a goddess too and we should be treated as royalty paradise is calling honey are you gonna pick up pack your bags and head over to houseofunity.com to grab yourself some goodies and let's go ahead and jump back into the episode so what I want to do is I want to bring up my friend in, he's not my friend in beauty, but he's a friend. Uh, he's like a friend of a friend. What I'm trying to do is like work out these like lingo for friends in beauty too. So he's a friend of a friend because he's not in the beauty industry, but you know, he can still contribute to us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my friend Samuel McDuffie. Let me give you all his bio really, really quick, really, really quick. So Samuel McDuffie is the mental motivator, life coach, and founder of Next Level Talk. talk. It's a lifestyle that teaches you how to elevate your way of thinking to the next level on a positive way of being. Sam truly loves what he does and has a unique approach to his craft. In fact, he's already making waves, dedicating his time towards the kids of the future. And why does he have a heart for the youth? It's very simple. As someone who lost his father at a young age, Sam knows what it's like to grow up with that type of void and wants to motivate and encourage other youth who may deal with a similar life trauma. He wants to help be the voice that, that he needed as a kid growing up. And most trauma is established early on in life, but it doesn't have to live in the present. Sam believes that if someone sets their mind appropriately, especially early on, everything else will follow suit in their life. So I want you all to give a round of applause for my friend, Samuel McDuffie. Side joke with Sam because ever since I asked Sam to do the Friends of Beauty podcast, anytime that he posts about it, he always has to put this song Pressure. And I don't know why, you know, he got it. I don't know why you think it's pressure, but Sam went through a lot to get here today. So I really appreciate you for pushing I through. You 14 hours. Yes. 14 hours. 14 hours on the road. The traffic was bananas. It's Friday, it's warm outside, people outside now. So I really appreciate you. For pushing through and being here, so I don't know how you, I don't know if you know how this works, but I always start off with icebreaker questions just to get us warmed up. Let's get no, I'm sad. Take a deep breath. <laughs> so the first one is just give us three random facts about you. I'm originally from Washington D.C. <laughs> I'm hard-headed. <laughs> And I don't listen sometimes. That's like the same thing. How are you? You don't listen? <laughs> Give us something. I overlove. You overlive? Overlove. Overlove. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. So, Sam, I have these things that I use on the podcast called Pod Decks. Okay. So, one is a what the heck and a would you rather. I'm going to show you. Which one do you want? What the heck? Oh, 
you put that in? Yes. What's it say? Would you ever consider writing to someone in jail as a pen pal? Would you ever consider writing to someone in jail as a pen pal, Sam? Yeah, I did it. I did it in 2002. Okay. Tell us all about it. Well, one of my um, associates in school, um, he had got into some trouble and he was a real good friend and I was always taught from the code, never turn your back on the people that did something for you. So I used to write them all the time, mm -hmm. even though I know he was never getting out of jail. So that was just something I did. It's something you pouring into other people as usual. As usual. That's, yeah. that's, that's my life, though. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I thought you was going to say you was writing a girl or something. They always exchanging <laughs> pictures and stuff. A girl in jail? <laughs> people do it, Sam. Oh, okay. I ain't know. So I know people who do this. Okay, look. All right, next one. When is the last time you did something for the first time? And I know Tayana over there think about her answer. <laughs> Repeat the question. When is the last time you did something for the first time? Three weeks ago. What you do? I dated outside my race. Okay. How was it? <laughs> tragic. It was tragic. It's a learning lesson, though. Right. You had to try it to know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. How you managed to Okay, so last one for the icebreakers. If you weren't a mindset coach, what else could you see yourself doing? Acting. Okay. Acting. Yeah, I tried it once. I tried it once and I got best actor, but it was it was brutal. It was brutal. I didn't see no people that looked like me. I was the only, I don't know if you said, uh, Killing the Mockingbird, I was Tom. Okay. So that was tough. <laughs> Was it like a high school thing? Music? No, it was mm, 2019. I did it because I wanted the kids to know that they can do anything. So how can I say I'm a mindset coach and you can do anything and I never. And I just did it one day. I just went up to uh, the theater guild in my town and they just put me out there. Yeah. I didn't remember my lines to the, to the last day and that was, that was rough. So. Yeah. But you did it though. Hey. That's like one thing that Keisha mentioned. Just do it. Hey, just do it. Just take the risk. Sometimes we think too much. Sometimes we think too much and we think ourselves out of taking action. And then you just never do anything. Hey. All the time. We do it all the time. All the time. Thank you so much for sharing. We can go ahead and jump into it. Sometimes when I interview people that I know, I always ask them, do you remember how we met? And you should. You better remember how we met. Yes, we met at a mine elevation. Okay. Um, that was supposed to be mine, but... Uh, <laughs> we can talk about it if you want. If you want to get it off your chest. Oh no, I ain't gonna get off my chest. Okay. Let, let people, let people win. I, I ain't no use of arguing in 2022. Just let people win. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So Sam and I met at a networking event, a mindset elevation networking event, and I have to actually tell you, like that event, like really inspired me. That's when I went to your event. I was like, okay, people networking again. I could start mine. And that's part of the reason why I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and push forward with doing this and doing some other things that are coming up because I've just always been waiting for people to get comfortable again with being in a room with each other. And when I came to your event and it was so intimate and it was so uplifting and it was a really good vibe, I met you there and we're here now. I was like, okay, we can do this. So thank you for hosting it. It doesn't even matter, you know? No, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for being here, for sure. So, I want to know, in your opinion, what does mindset elevation mean? That's a great question. Uh, mindset elevation is just seeing the good in everything. Um, mindset elevation is also taking yourself from one place to the next and getting to the next level. I mean, in life, um, as kids, as having partners, somebody telling you, what you can't do. I heard the young lady say it. I don't know if she's still here. Mm -hmm. But um, I got tired of people always telling people what they can and cannot do because they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So um, I just started this journey and um, I've been doing it since a kid and then I always help a lot of people in the industry and I just don't say their names because they're just to protect them. But I just learned that some people just need a little push. Um, they keep talking to the same people over and over, getting the same results, and I think that's insanity. You keep doing the same thing over and over, thinking you're going to get a different result. And I think people just need to talk to somebody that's already been through it 
and just let them grow. Them, so mm -hmm. that's what I think it is. What is it like though when you're not really surrounded by people who have elevated mindsets and there are people around you that are telling you you can't do this or I don't think this is a good idea. Like how do you eventually break away from that to the, you know, step into your role of who you're supposed to be? I mean, not to be rude, I just leave. Mm -hmm. I just leave. I just, I have the um, ability in my mind just to leave. If somebody's talking something I really don't want to hear and it's nonsense or foolishness, I just leave. Not to be rude, I smile. Mm -hmm. I just leave. I mean, we only got one shot of this thing called life and I don't want to waste it no more. I done been through so much. I don't know if y'all grew up in the D.C. area, but it's a lot to make it here. Yeah. And um, until I moved away, I just knew it was a better life. And I did that in 2000 and 2008, everybody said, oh, how are you going to move to Florida? You don't know nobody there. You don't know how to get to Florida. And I was in a Fortune 500 company, and I was the youngest um, manager there in the, in the history there. And they was like, you just can't leave and just go somewhere. I said, why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not leave? So I just worked hard. I went down there. I, I interviewed without them knowing on my little vacation. I came back, and then... Somebody believed in me, so I, I just took the risk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned corporate America. So how do you go from corporate America to what you're doing now? Knowing that I was never going to get higher than 110000 a year, so I, I said, man, I started doing the math in my head. In 2046, gas prices is going to be this, that's going to be that problem. And I want to get a woman. It didn't add up to me. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I had a cat, and I didn't want to live like that for the rest of my life. And a lot of people said I was crazy. I mean, they said I was crazy. You left a good job like that. I said I'm stressing every day, doing something I don't want to do. I'm faking it. It's phony going to work and act. That's just my opinion. <laughs> it's phony going around people that doesn't even like you, and you gotta act. And then go home and see the people you really like, you don't even got no energy for them. So I said, man, I got to change this narrative. Yeah. I don't care if I got to go broke for 10 years, I know it's going to pay off in the end. So I just started reading every day. I used to make a log of a book. Every day I read, people was like, I learned back in school. One of my teachers said, readers are leaders. And I was like, right. And I just started studying all the wealthy people, what they did. I ain't have no mentors. I ain't have enough money to pay for it. So I just started reading books, and they was my mentors. Mm -hmm. How did you transition from corporate to entrepreneurship? Oh, it's hard. It was hard. Don't let them, don't let them fool you. It's, it's really hard, but you just got to take that risk with inside yourself. Like, it's going to get lonely, and I'm going to tell you, your, fa uh, your family and friends are not going to support you in the beginning. I'm going to tell you this now, and I don't care what they say. Oh, girl, go on with they are not going to support because they still remember you in their mind when you messed up with them or when you was a little girl or when you did something wrong so they can't see past that. And that's what I had to learn. I mean, I used to go crazy like, I did all this, y'all couldn't even come to it. But then I had to realize that's not their job. That's, that's really not their job. Mm -hmm. I would love to know the mindset behind that, though, because I know in particular there's one person in the room that I know for sure, so I'm asking this question for her. Like, what is the mindset that you have to have in order to leave something that is so secure? You know where your paycheck is coming from every other week or every week, however often you get paid, to then say, I'm going to bet it all on myself despite what anybody thinks about me. Like, what, what do you, where do you have to go up here to, to stick with it? I know you're going to be having time, tough times, but to initially take that step, what's the mindset behind that? <laughs> um, the mindset you got to have, is first, I, I would say, get around people that's like-minded. I know you hear it all the time, it's cliche, but you got to get around people that believe in you regardless of what's going on. I mean, your best friend, your bestie, I call them. Yeah, they believe in you, but they want to keep you there. They don't want you leaving them for real. So I had to learn. I had to get around different people, meet different people, meet different people that doesn't look like me. And that was hard because I was taught from his. You go down the South and be around that, that, that white person, that's the devil. Now, they kept telling me that for so many years. And I'm like, man, they do more than me than my own people. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? And I was stuck in that. So I had to break that mindset and just get around them, just learn from them. And even though if I know they, they, how do they say the DC, uh, they swelling. 
Like they, even if they sweating, I just take the meat and separate the fat, and I just had to hold on to what I can hold on to. Mm -hmm. And I like to say where I'm from, I don't say it very often. Segregation just got out of school two years ago. And a lot of people didn't know that. And I took an ultimate sacrifice, I won't say on camera, for a lot of people down there just to realize, because I was the first black um, manager down there. And now the whole town and the surrounding towns, now you see black faces. And people will be like, oh, that was the guy right there. And I'm like, man, I don't care about none of that. I did it because that's what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? I took the sacrifice for other people, not looking for a recognition or... All, all the fame, so. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that I heard you say at the Mindset Elevation, and I caught it on camera, I'm so glad I caught it on camera, is in my vlog. You mentioned something about the three C's that you always have to take with you. And you said it real quick, you was talking to, um, I forget her name. You was talking to the young lady that got up and did her poem, but it was like real quick and I happened to catch it on camera. But what are the three C's that you always have to take with you? Yeah, I took these three C's since, I can say, elementary school, Martin Luther King Elementary School, Dr. Martin Luther King over in Southeast. Um, first, you got to have courage. You got to have courage. That's the first thing you got to have. You got to have the courage to do what you want to do. And then you got to have the confidence. Like, that's a hard thing to have confidence around people you don't know and people you never met before. Like, it's mm -hmm. just a, a human thing. Like, I don't know this person. Like, I, I had to get the confidence. And then I had to be consistent every day. Like, one thing on my, my Instagram, I, I grew it to almost 40,000. Like, I was consistent every day, regardless if I only got one like. I always got that one like, because I always like myself. And I was like, I'm going to do myself. I'm going to push that one like. Nobody else ain't going to like it. I'm going to do it. And that's the mindset I had, regardless. And then mm -hmm. one day, I mean, just to talk about Instagram, um, I knew it was going to blow up. I was like, man, I, I did my KPIs. I, I, I was studying it for almost three years. And I was like, oh, this is the one. I know it's going to happen. All my friends are laughing. And then it just happened. I went from like 4,000 followers to like 35,000 followers in like two weeks. And people was like, what did you do? You paid for that? I said, I don't pay for nothing. I'm like paying for followers. I just learned it. I studied it every day and I was consistent. Okay, I imagine. I would love to know what are the mind sh mindset shifts that you had to make in order to be who you are at this present moment? I had to learn that I'm not always right. Mm. Oh, so somebody's like, mmm. <laughs> somebody felt <I> mean, that. <laughs> even just in, in, in relationships, you, you're just not always right. If you always, I learned there's no right or wrong. And people laugh at me like, it gotta be right or wrong. No, it ain't no right or wrong because somebody in another country can, they don't even have the same language as you or they don't even think the same way. So how can you tell them they right or they wrong? So I had to get out of my own way of thinking of what I was taught. Yeah. I mean, I love grandma to death, but mama, grandma, you know, you know she, she loves you. She know how to love, but she can't tell you how to be rich. She can't tell you how to do this. And I had to learn that. I took all the principles she had, but when she told me you couldn't be a millionaire, you couldn't be this, and you shouldn't be that, like, I kind of pushed it to the side. So I learned, like, you, you, it's no right or wrong. Yeah. What I want to ask is, what are some realistic ways that people can elevate their mindset when they're, all they see is their reality at the moment? Like, they see that they, they're struggling, or their business doesn't look the way that they want it to look. That's all that they see, so how can you, what are some practices that people can do to elevate their mindset when they're in that space of reality at the moment? And it's not looking like how they want it to look. Um, okay, let's talk about social media. One thing I learned with social media, I unfollow everything that, that have to do with my goals. So instead of looking at the, the big booty, big booty girls and all that, the guys with the muscle, I just scroll my, my Instagram. So make sure every day I'm the positive. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at positive posts every day. I'm not watching the news because every time you look at the news, it's something negative. You always see somebody die, and then you ever notice, just like with COVID, you talk to one person with COVID, and the next person talks to them. It's called the law of attraction. You're attracting what you see and what you're doing every day. So I got an asset. Like somebody said, well, how you know what's going on in another country? I'm like, ain't nothing to do with me. I'm trying to focus on me and what I got to do. How you know what the weather going to be like? Man, you 30-something years old, look outside, you know what the weather's going to be like. like 
So I started taking those practices from these wealthy people that told me. They just said, stop reading books. He said, Sam, if it's something that's going to be that bad that's going on, somebody's just going to tell you because they're going to run their mouth. Mm -hmm. I was like, dang, that is true. Like, so I just focused all my energy on what I had to do. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's this thing of, have y'all ever heard of imposter syndrome before? Mm -hmm. Like, imposter syndrome is real. You, you heard about imposter syndrome? Well, last year I read it when I was coming here. <laughs> it's just like being in the position where, like, okay, so it's, as far as imposter syndrome, this is what I want to ask. Is there a thin line between faking it until you make it? Because that's kind of where people get stuck with imposter syndrome sometimes, like, Maybe you are successful and you just don't believe it, or some people are faking it until they get successful so that they can convince themselves that they made it. Like, is there a thin line between faking it till you make it? Or is the mindset like, I'm, I got it, like, how, how do we act? That's a great question. Um, I think everybody fake it till they make it, to be honest. Um, I even. <laughs> If you work in the corporate America, half of that stuff I didn't know, but I just figured it out that that last that night or whatever the case may be. I faked it until I make it. Like you get in a position in anything in life, you really don't know what it is. You take the time out to hurry up and learn it. So you're really faking it. That's just my mindset. Like I listen to Jay Z a lot. Like he faked it until he made it. Like, mm -hmm. And his head, he was like, man, I'm, I'm a rich, I'm a million, I'm a billionaire, but he carried himself like that and it turned into his reality. Yeah. So that's just my my thought process with that. Okay. At the end of the day, Sam, what do you want your legacy to be? Like, what kind of impact do you want to leave on the world? I just want the whole world to have next level talk. I don't want them to have conversations that that's meaningless, like gossip. Like, I I dislike like I question people all the time. They be like, "Well, Kim Kardashian." I was like, "How do you know? How do you how do you know? Like, you know them personally? Well, that was the, I said they show you ten minutes of your life." And you just know everything about them. I said, do you know that these people, it's, it's, it's 24 hours in a day, you only seen 10 minutes, like how do you know? Oh, the reality, I said, look, I've been around those reality wives, like that's, that's scripted. No, it's not. I said, trust me, I was just in Atlanta with those people, they told me. So I just want everybody to have next level talk, talk have meaningful conversations. Of course, people gonna vent to you, people gonna say things, but why gossip? Like, what is it doing? How is it benefiting you? Because I'm telling you, this world is small. It ain't even six degrees of separation no more. It's three degrees. Right. And I tell you, like, you three degrees from to get to anybody in the world, and people be like, no, you're not. Like, with the internet and you your followers, like, people know everybody. So when you run in your mouth, I mean, you do you. It's going to come back. Like, it's that small now. It really is. We were just talking about that as far as, like, the beauty industry in particular. Like, it's big, but it's not. So you can tell somebody something, and it's going to get back around. It, it definitely is. I've seen so many instances before where it's like, this literally, oh my God, I have to share this, because it's like, this literally just happened. So someone reached out to me to ask about somebody. Like, hey, this person said that they know you, and I'm trying to do some business with her. What is your record? I said, what's her last name? If it's the person I'm thinking about, don't even do it. Come don't on. do it Come because on she got me. And he's like, oh, that's like a red flag because she didn't even mention any of the stuff that you just told me. Like, I went to detail about it. So, and this is somebody who's not even in the beauty industry. Imagine that. that this was somebody that wasn't even in the beauty industry asking me about this person. So you have to be very, very careful about the impact that you leave, the, the type of business that you do with people. And it's crazy out here. I'm gonna say one thing, people, that Google thing, they know is they know everything. Like literally, I'm not even I only been to LA what twice and somebody asked me about somebody in LA, like, hey, what you think about this person? I asked them, why are you asking me that question? I know who you are, what do you think about? I seen him with you at this event. I'm like, God dang, why didn't he see you there? But yeah, it's that small. And the best thing I learned is just keep your mouth closed and always be positive on their name regardless of what happened. Like, you could be in your feelings, like feelings are not real. And I know that sounds crazy, but feelings are not real. I feel like I should be a billionaire, but I don't have a billion dollars. That is a feeling. Like I think I should be with Megan Good or whoever, but I'm not with 
shoot your shot, you single. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I gotta find me first because I ain't gonna be good for nobody unless I get myself together. Like I had to learn that. So just just be careful in this industry. Like everybody loves talking and they giving you pop quizzes. And one thing I can say, being from DC, it can take you anywhere. Like. I think the young lady said that she was going to be Africa. I turned down going to Ghana because I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And I'm a mindset coach. I was like, man, I'm not, I'm not ready for that. Like, I need a crew to go with me. I'm going to another country. I need to make... Ghana's it. it. God, uh, oh, you yeah. have to go. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't pass up that opportunity again. Yeah. When it comes back, you have to go. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Before you go, I have to ask you the Friends of Beauty Rapid Fire question. Let's get to okay, it. Okay, so whatever comes to your mind first, just spit it out. What the, he's serious. Y'all see his face? He's like, <laughs> hey, what you let's do it. <laughs> what are the top three keys to your success so far? Consistency, confidence, and courage. All right, and how do you measure your success? By my peace. Mm. Okay, all right. Well, what's the best advice you've ever received? Just get in the room. And my mentor, um, and I shout him out on here, Detroit Mogul, um, young guy, 35, from Detroit, moved to Tampa. He said, Sam, if you could just get in the room because your network is your net worth. And um, this guy makes, it ain't about the money with me, I can care less. I've seen people in this area make money all the time, but um, he made $94,000 just on Instagram. And I'm like, yo, just on Instagram? He was like, I got in the room, I got the information that I needed from an Asian guy just by being in the room. So I take that seriously. I just try to get in every room I could. And a lot of people say, you just travel here and, and, and no, you're not getting no money for it. I said, man, that's the problem, man. You, you just worried about the money too much. I don't, I don't spend money, I circulate money. And I read this book by Julius Gordon. He said, you circulate money. When you say spending, it's already gone. So you got to sit like a boomerang and circling money to yourself. So it's power in the tongue, but do we really do it? Mm -hmm. So that's what What's the book? Do you know the name of the book? Yeah, it's Julius Gordon. It's called Money or Righteousness or something like that. That book is special, though. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was worth it. Can we photocopy it? Yeah, I see, I see your copy. <laughs> um, what advice would you give to someone who feels like they have a strong mindset, they've been consistent, they've been putting in the work, but stuff still is not panning out the way that they want it. Should they revert? What kind of advice would you give to them? Um, the advice I guess keep on going. How long just, do you keep going? Though? You just keep on going. I mean, if you hear everybody's success story, whether it's from Eric Thomas, whether it's from Oprah, it took them 10 years, 11 years. You, um, Zig Ziglar say, you just got to help enough. I mean, if you want to get to where you want to go, you got to help enough people get to where they want to go. Mm -hmm. And that's a real saying. Like, we always looking um, for a money value. And um, I don't know if y'all ever heard of wholesaling, mm -hmm. just like in um, with real estate. You got to get enough no's to get that yes. And the one thing I program myself when I hear no, we've been hearing no as a child. No, don't do this. No, do that. And we forgot those child instincts. You know, after you keep doing it over and over and over, your parents always give in and say, all right, I'm going to give it to you. And that's the same mindset I do out here. Like, every time I go to a, a I mean, it's funny. Every time I go to a restaurant or to the mall, I negotiate. I know you got enough money. I need a discount. I ain't taking no for an answer. Like, I need that. Like, you got some yeah. African in your blood. <laughs> yeah, I did it in this. And that's the mindset that you gotta have. Like, Walmart make all this money, and you tell me this is a hundred dollars gonna hurt your business? Nah, look, I need this, this, and this, and this. I need a discount. But well, we don't get discounts. You, I don't know why you're working here. You need to go get your manager. And this is the mindset. I we gonna shop him with Sam, y'all, because <laughs> he got the sauce, obviously. Okay. What's a resource that has helped you in your business that you can share with the Friends of Beauty community? Um, I, I recommend this one book. It's called um, The Four Agreements. Yes. yes. And I say that's one of the greatest like books because it taught me that um, you got to always keep your word. And that's one thing I told you. I kept my word. And, and I don't know what may come out of this, but I said I'm going to get 
to D.C., even though if I got to drive, even though I can't get on a plane. The second agreement is never take anything personal. And one thing I learned in life, anything that requires a signature is business. And people laugh at me, like, what do you mean? I said, it's business. Any money exchange is business, unless you're just giving the way you don't want it back. And the next one, number three, is never assume. That's one thing, and who I talk about in relationships where I messed up, and I say publicly, like, you assume stuff. Just because somebody's talking to this person or doing it, you don't know what happened, what they talked about. Just don't assume anything. Mm -hmm. Just go in there with a clean, clean head. I know it's hard to do because you be like, I've seen this before, and this, 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 and that. That doesn't mean that that happened in this situation. Right. And the last one is just do your best. Nobody knows your best. Like, everybody will tell you what you could and what you could not do. You know... You've been living with yourself for, I don't know how old you are, I've been, I'm 38, I've been living with myself 38 years. I know what my best is. Nobody can tell me what my best is. Mm -hmm. So, those are the four agreements. I don't know if I gave away the book. I love it. Yeah. No, they, you should definitely still read the book. If you've never read the four agreements, I love that book. Because it, I think that was probably the beginning of me, like, letting go of control of certain things. I love that book. Last one, I just want you to fill in the blank and just say, my name is blank. And the key to longevity and success is whatever you think it is. My name is Samuel McDuffie, and the key to longevity, longevity and success okay. is no stress, no drama, and no confusion. Okay, no stress, no drama, no confusion. Okay. Before you go, share your social media with, or however you want people to connect with you. Um, my name is Samuel McDuffie. Um, my social media is Next Level Talk. I'm working on my TikTok, so I got to start doing my dances. That's a little challenge for me right now. And everybody laugh at me. A kid made $3,000 a week just doing dances, and I had to change my mindset. They can do it. I can do it. I was, I was at the Go-Go's getting it in, so I, I'm working on myself. You just got to do something you've never done before to have what you want in, 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 in the future. So if I could just do dances for a whole year, the next year some, some company going to invest in me, because as the world is changing, you're not seeing commercials no more. And I just get an insight because I was in the meeting. They are paying people like you and me to promote their products. So just get on that wave. And we laugh at these kids like, oh, you ain't doing nothing. But on the internet, look at that kid bank account. They doing some numbers. And I'm just going to be honest with you. And that's why I try to encourage the youth to go after your dreams. And a nine to five, you ever notice that everybody hiring? That's the reason, because the kids now are not working at them jobs. They are finding the ways to make money. I'm not getting into that. Cause <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank this you. was amazing. Give it up for Sam and Ducky. All right, all right, y'all. I always forget to tell y'all something. Like, if you, if you look at my YouTube, oh, yes, last call for the bar. Did y'all enjoy the drinks? Yeah. Sponsored by Buddy Left the Light. If y'all look at my YouTube, make sure y'all subscribe to my YouTube too. It's, you know, the little bit.ly thing. It's fib too. Or just click the link in my bio on. But I always forget to tell y'all stuff. I totally forgot to tell y'all that Miss Lima was not gonna make it because she was one of the panelists. Unfortunately, she's not feeling well. I totally forgot to tell y'all that. And it was something else I totally forgot to tell y'all that I just forgot. Again, I don't even, I can't deal with myself. Um, before we bring up the next speaker, I want to do a giveaway, another giveaway. These giveaways are sponsored by Face Front Skin. Um, nice enough to send over so many amazing products. And before you go, please grab a goodie bag before you go. I have some, and a cookie. I have some really cute cookies over there for y'all. Make sure you grab that before you head out the door. But I wanna do another giveaway, and I'm trying to think of like a random-ish question to ask. Does anybody know the first two people I interviewed for a Friends and Beauty podcast? <laughs> the first two people I interviewed for the Friends and Beauty podcast, anybody know? No, let me think. Does anybody know, I can't ask that question because two people know that question. You know? I think it's Vanessa and Morel. You got one of them right. You got one. Should I give it? I should just give it to you. Come here. <laughs> you got one of them right. Here you go. So I interviewed Morel and I interviewed um, Brittany Rogers first. And I want to give a quick shout out to um, Click Warehouse. I actually wanted to tell you all, I'm... 
I'm, I was being very intentional with choosing this space because when I started doing makeup, there was a, um, a photographer studio literally next door. It's um, 8067. Yes, Studio 223. And that was like my home for a very, very long time. When I first started doing makeup, my makeup teacher had a connection at that studio next door and she bought over some of her students and that's how I got really, really good with makeup. The, photog the photographer that owned the studio was very spontaneous and I would just be sitting at home like doing nothing. He was like, you trying to shoot? I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to shoot. He was like, okay, I'm about to find a model. And I was in the studio so much and literally within like months, I could take a picture of one model from the next and just see the, like the progression in my artistry. So it really is that consistency of just sticking to something, practicing, you know, doing it over and over and over. But I digress. <laughs> but I really, I really want to be very intentional about why I chose to, um, you know, do it here. This area has like a lot of like memories and everything like that. This episode of the Friends and Beauty podcast is brought to you by Face Front Skin. Founded by Melinda Williams, a registered nurse, esthetician, and pro makeup artist, Face Front Skin is the perfect combination of holistic vegan ingredients and the latest scientific technology that together creates gentle, effective, and 100% toxin-free skin cleansers, vitamin C, and without any of the harmful and yucky ingredients. Face Front launched its Skin Hydro, a hydrating facial elixir spritzer that's a first of its kind product made with fresh, iris moss extract. Gone are the days of scrubbing and cleansing to rid your face of the redness and irritated skin caused by that masny. You already know what I'm talking about. Face front skin has you covered. Want expensive skin? Make the skin investment and run over to facefrontskin.com to grab your skincare must-haves and thank me later. Let's go ahead and jump back into the episode. So, my next guest, oh my gosh, I'm just so tickled. My next guest holds a very special place in my heart. I want you all to welcome my girl, Tayana Robinson, yes. beauty business strategist to the Friends of Beauty guest chair. I have to give y'all her bio. Okay, so Tayana is an award-winning Washington, D.C.-based professional makeup artist and founder of Beauty Mogul University, where she teaches makeup artists and freelance beauty pros how to diversify their income, create money on demand, and launch their digital beauty businesses by offering online classes, courses, and digital and physical products so they can learn how to make money beyond their chair. She has been voted as DC's top makeup artist by City Paper, and her work as a beautypreneur has been featured in Black Enterprise, Entrepreneur.com, and Essence Magazine. In 2020, she was included in the Roots Glow Up 50, an annual celebration of the black tastemakers, trendsetters, and innovators elevating the world of style in the same category as Rihanna, okay? So I want y'all to give a round of applause and welcome my friend in beauty, Tayana Robinson, to the Friends of Beauty guest chair. about that. I know Tayana loves her some Beyonce's. I was like, you gotta play some Beyonce's when Tayana comes up. Y'all, let's do these icebreakers first, okay. then I'm gonna talk about Tayana, okay? So, Tayana, welcome to the Friends of Beauty guest chair. Thank you so much I'm for having so me. I'm so happy to have you here. You I have no idea. thrilled to be here. We've been trying to like make this happen. It is, it's so crazy how it came together because this was the one. Yes. And one ele well, 11 is my number. Yes. So no, this is 111. This is just crazy. I love so it. Excited. I love it. <laughs> Before we jump into the interview, let's start off with some icebreakers so we can get to know Tayana a little bit outside of what she does. Give us three random facts about you. Three random facts about me. Okay, I am originally from New Jersey. I lived in Cambodia for two years. And I hate cheese, but I love pizza. <laughs> she hates cheese, but she loves pizza. So I'm going to give you these pod decks. Let me see how I can hold them up. Got a would you rather and a... Look, my hands are small. <laughs> Got small hands, y'all. That jumped out at me. All right. Oh. Is that one? Would you, would you rather? I was gonna pick that one in. Would you rather? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Choose a random card and read it to us. All right. It's a question. Look at this question. 
have pizza rolls or, <laughs> or pizza bagels. Um, given that I'm from New Jersey and New Jersey has the best bagels in America, I would do a pizza bagel. Okay. Yeah, and then okay. put the cheese off. <laughs> the cheese is disgusting, but pizza is very delicious. Okay, I ain't mad at that. No judgment over here. I don't know how you eat pizza with no cheese, but just a little bit of cheese. All right, all right. <laughs> When is the last time you did something for the first time? It's so funny because I was like thinking about that <laughs> the whole time. And let me tell you something. I have been in quarantine at the house, okay? <laughs> um, so I would say the last time that I did something for the first time was in December. Mm -hmm. Me and my husband moved to D.C. Oh. And I've never, I'm a D.C. resident. Yes. I'm in these streets. Um, so that was the first time. I've never lived in D.C. before. Okay. So, yeah. Welcome to D.C. I have been loving it. Yes, I'm so That's happy awesome. for you. I'm happy too. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so if you were the CEO of Beauty Mobile University and all of the other amazing things that you do, what else could you see yourself doing? I always knew that I wanted to do something in beauty. So when I was growing up, um, I always loved makeup. I was wearing makeup when I was 11, <laughs> 12. I'm way too young, and so I always wanted to make makeup. So I think if I wasn't doing makeup, I was just telling my husband this the other day, I think I would have been a cosmetic chemist. Okay, yeah. I can see that. That's yeah. dope. Okay, yeah. all right, let's go ahead and jump into it. Like I said, when I when I interview people that I know, I always like to ask them, do you remember how we met? <laughs> I don't remember how we met. I just know that I've always known you since the very beginning. Right. I don't, I don't remember. remember. Yeah, I don't know. The, I don't know either, like, the exact, like, touch point where we yeah. met. I just remember me and Tayana doing like a little practice session. I remember Tayana used to do like these colorful Girl, eyes. Girl, what in the world? The eye used to be beats, okay? And that's not something I'm good at. If you look at my page when it comes to makeup, I'm all about the skin. So I always wanted to learn how to do like a really good eyeshadow. And I remember we did like an exchange. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna show you how I do my skin, and you gonna show me how you do these eyes. Yeah. And looking back at the pictures now, it's like, girl, girl. Yeah. we was jacking up people up. We were doing nothing <laughs> in my kitchen, in her kitchen. Okay, <laughs> but we were trying. We did our best. I wish she was here. Callie was gonna come today, yeah. and I wish because she was the model. That would have been like a whole full like, circle moment. A whole full circle moment. But just exchanging, seeing something in each other, and then. Yeah. We had the same coach at one point. Mm -hmm. Tayana has been my coach at one point. Yeah. And I really have to give Tayana her flowers at this moment, like in front of everybody, because oh. she is actually the person that pushed me to teach. Oh, yeah. She, I was not trying to teach. Everybody kept telling me, oh, you'd be a good teacher, education, blah, 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 blah. I was in Tayana's coaching program, and she helped me put together my very first yeah. makeup class that I did, and we sold out. And then people bought stuff in the room, like other packages to have a hands on. I was like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> is this a thing? Hey, what are we going to do, girl? We're going to get these calls. Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> we going to do. And I remember coming to her afterwards, like, girl, people actually bought this stuff. She was like, yes, <laughs> you're supposed to. But Tayana, you have been so instrumental in just pushing me out there. Just, I feel like you've always seen something in me. It's like just one day, I feel like you just been kind of waiting back and just to see like when this girl going to start believing in herself <laughs> and like do something. So I really have to like give you your props and just say thank you so much for like pushing me and just helping me along the way. And I, it's really such an honor to like be able to sit here with you and just chat. I am just, <laughs> I, well, first of all, thank you. But I have always known that you have such a special gift. And to see this platform, this beautiful platform that you're creating for other beauty pros to connect with each other and put themselves out there, it's just such a beautiful thing and for you to be here. 111 episodes deep, like, it's just insane. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so yeah. much. So I would love for you to give people, like, a quick, like, snapshot of... Yeah. How you went from marketing Navy to beauty mobile? Because I remember, the, I didn't go lie. The first time I had known you for a while, and the first time I heard you tell your story, you did like the care thing. It was like a care, yeah. care package. Yep, yep, yep. And this girl said that she lived in Cambodia. I was like, <laughs> what? What is that? What you was doing in Cambodia? Like I had never even heard you talk about that before. So give us like a quick like snapshot from you know. Yes. Okay. So. I first of all told you that I wanted to be a cosmetic chemist and so I went to, 
went to college, got a scholarship to college, but my scholarship was for athletics. And so um, when you are a D1 athlete, like that's your job. Like you really don't have time to, you don't go to school for school. <laughs> you go to school for sport. And so I just couldn't keep up with chemistry. So I ended up pivoting a bunch of times and um, graduated with a degree in um, political science. And then, um, so I've always loved makeup, hair, fashion, beauty. So while I was still in school, I would be on like the beauty boards. Like this is before social media. So you would get on chat boards and we would talk about hair and makeup. And so this woman was launching a hair extensions company. She was a black woman and she was going over to Cambodia to start this hair extensions company. And this is years ago, y'all. So people didn't really, bundles weren't a thing. Like you had to go on the board to get the lowdown or where you could get good hair. Cambodia and so I didn't know what I was going to do with my life because I wasn't going to be a cosmetic chemist anymore. I thought I was going to be a lawyer. That didn't work. Um, didn't want to go to law school and so I literally just randomly reached out to her one day and I was like, I love what you're doing. Can I, like, I'd be happy to just be your assistant, answer emails, like whatever you need. And she was like, no. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. So I'm like, okay. Didn't think anything of it. A few months after I graduated from college, I ran, I literally, I can't, I will never forget how this happened. I literally sat up in my bed and something told me like, look at your laptop. So I opened my laptop and there was an email from her that said, what can I do to get you to move to Denver? And at the time I was in New Mexico because that's where I went to school, she was in Denver. And so I'm like, say less. That was literally a Friday. So I packed everything I owned in my little Honda Civic and drove, quit my job that day. Like I was like, bye y'all. Quit my job and went to Denver to work with her. I just knew, like, that was that was my next chapter. Um, and so I started working with her. I was literally answering emails, packing orders, like whatever whatever was needed. And her business just blew up, so she ended up getting featured in Essence, and so it just went crazy. And she was going back and forth um, to Cambodia, and I had been working with her for like two months. And she comes back into the office. She's like, "You want to move to Cambodia with me?" <laughs> And that is where I learned so much about um, social media and how you market a luxury beauty product to women online. This is before Instagram was out, so it was just Facebook, and so we had a private face, like a woman. So I worked uh, with her in Cambodia for two years. That was the most transformational experience of my life. And that was like my entrepreneurial battle. Like I learned so much about marketing, sales, running a business, pivoting. What do you do? Like just crazy stuff. And so um, ended up coming back home because I met my now husband online, child. I was sliding into the DMs, came back to the United States, and then literally like a week or two later, she she had a lady off unexpectedly. There was a bezeling happening in the company. It was crazy. So I found myself like, what am I going to do? Right? I had no answers. All I knew was that I was broke because I had spent all my money coming back to the States and I had no plan B. So I ended up moving to this area, um, no job, just a boyfriend. <laughs> moved there with him, hoping to get a government job in DC. That didn't work out, and it's so crazy how God works because I know that He aligned every single moment to lead to me being in DC. We were out at a networking event, crazy enough, and my husband was. He's my, still my boyfriend at the time, but he was introducing me um, to his friends and colleagues. And so one of them was like, I love all your posts on Instagram. You know, I love your makeup. Can you do my makeup for an event? Y'all, I had never done anybody's makeup ever. Like, never, ever. Just had my little matte quads. I was doing my little purple eyeshadow. And I don't know. It was God. Like, literally, it was God. Because had I still had my full-time job and the comfort of that check coming in, I never would have said yes. But I said yes, and I did her makeup, and I was like, that's it. That is what I'm supposed to do. So ever since then, I've been makeup artist. And I feel like I have known you since the beginning, the beginning of that moment. So that is literally how the story happened. And um, I decided to you know, do makeup, went to classes. So I went to Rini Vet. Everybody was having a class in the DC area. I was there um, trying to learn as much as I could because I was a graduate of YouTube University. <laughs> And um, within two years of picking up my brush for the first time as a professional, um, I was able to grow my business to six figures because I had this background in marketing and sales. And what's different about being a makeup artist, especially when you're not in film and TV or you're not a celebrity artist, you're just like, 
we just work with brides and like, you know, people who just want to look pretty for a special occasion. What's different from that, from being like a hairstylist or a lash, a lash tech is, makeup is so extra, like women don't really need it and it's not something that they need over and over again. So it is a little bit harder mm -hmm. um, to grow and especially grow so quickly as a makeup artist. So that was like a rare thing. And so people started asking how that, you know, yeah. how that came together and I started teaching and here we are. I just literally, when you said classes and mini baskets and all that stuff, I literally just remember us being at Sam Fine's class yes. and when Sonya got up on that stage. Yeah. And we were like, girl, <laughs> no. <laughs> we were there. I was like, this is application. What is this? Like, but Sonya has been such a major help in like both of us. But she got up and did like this whole pitch about trying to get people into her coaching program. Yeah. It was like an application fee. Like, who is this woman, first of all? And she I had never heard of money. Um, mm -hmm. All I knew was mentorship, right? And so I literally went to that class because I was stuck in my business at the time. Um, and I was like, maybe I can meet somebody or ask a question. And I have been praying before going to that class, like, if I could just find a mentor that could, like, help me connect the dots. Because I know how to market, but it's just, like, the business stuff. I just couldn't quite make it work as a makeup artist. And so went in that class, heard the, heard the, literally everything that I had asked or prayed for. And we still said no. We were like, girl, bye. We end up saying yes, and the rest she got us in yeah. yeah, she got us in there. Yeah. Yes, it's been so amazing. I would love to know when did you realize that making money beyond your chair was the move? Yeah, it was around that time because I was booked, busy, and broke, and I never thought that that could be a thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like running around town with my kid, going from client to client, and working weddings that had like 11, 12 people and you're you know, standing on your feet for hours and hours and hours and I would come home after a booking and my back would hurt and my feet would hurt and I would look at my bank account and I'd be like, I worked way too hard to be this broke. <laughs> and so, um, I'm telling you that class was such a pivotal moment because I also remember looking around and being like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there's like over a hundred people I'll be counting coins. Cause I'm like, I know how much I pay to be in here. So how many people is it? <laughs> right, I'm doing the math on it. And I'm like, they made like 50, you know what I mean? Like, wow, you can make so much money when you start to expand your business as a beauty pro beyond just what you do, right? So when you can make money from what you know, you can have a brand, like there's all these things that you can do so that you don't have to hustle and work so hard behind the chair. Cause being a makeup artist is hard on the body. It's fun, it's all the things, but it's, not an easy job, and so I knew that I didn't want to be behind the chair, have to be behind the chair if I didn't want to have to be, and so that was like the, the aha moment where I was like, oh, it's possible, and this is how people are doing it. Yeah, yeah, I was absolutely. What are some things that you see like other makeup artists or beauty entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs like wasting time on that has like absolutely, they have no business doing it, is not working towards their business? I, ha I have to agree with your last guess. There's no right or wrong, right? There's so many different ways that you can build your business, so I'm hesitant to be like, you're wasting your time, right? Yeah. I can tell you what I did, what, what I did not do. Mm -hmm. So I still don't have, like, <laughs> she's she's me. Me. <laughs> I actually still don't have a fully functioning website. What I chose to focus on is sales pages and funnels, like digital marketing strategies that I can actually, like, drive traffic to and, like, get people's money. I felt like as a makeup artist, people could see my work on Instagram, but if I wanted to like convert convert you know clients online, I would have to do something a little bit different. So I didn't have a website, I, did, I never had business cards. Like a lot of the traditional, I, I still don't really technically have like solid branding quite yet. Um, I really focused on the things that would make me money. Yeah. Um, and so I really mastered having a digital beauty business. I learned how to convert a client online and make money from them over and over and over again and have systems that work for you because Keisha's so right, like makeup artists specifically, we're so behind, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just want to bring more artists into those more advanced strategies. Absolutely. For those who don't know what a funnel is, can you explain to them what a funnel is? Yeah, so a funnel is the step-by-step -step process that takes your customer from not knowing you online, finding you via Google or searching on Instagram, which is what most people do when they look for makeup artists too. Mm -hmm. It's like the process of taking them from discovering you to, okay, she's dope, I'm interested, to actually being a booked client 
who can then spend money with you over and over again. So it's like all the systems and the step-by-step -step process that you take through your own mind. Yeah. yeah. I know in your programs, you have to, like, the amount of people that you help, I know you have to come across beautypreneurs, entrepreneurs who are mostly passionate. Like, yeah. doing multiple things, I want to do this, I want to do that. What advice do you give to them when they're like, I don't know what to focus on because I'm so good at a lot of different things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I have a controversial take because I know a lot of people say like, you should only do one thing and niche down and I just don't, I don't believe that for myself and I also don't believe that for other beauty pros. I think that you can do multiple things and be multi-passionate multi and also like be in all your gifts, I think that is possible, but I do think that it's challenging to do more than one thing well at a time, right? And so there are seasons, right? So even in my, you know, when I think about my marketing calendar, I offer and sell different things throughout the year, um, but it's like when I am selling one thing, that's my focus, and I really put everything, all my effort and energy into just talking about that one thing, and then I do a different campaign, and I do a different campaign. So it's just like thinking about your gift, skills, and talent. First of all, fully stepping into your light, right? Because um, that's when you shine the brightest. It's the thing that makes you special. For you, it's network. Like, Everyone has that thing that makes them special. So like fully embracing all the gifts, skills, and talents and then thinking about it in seasons. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the trick. I want to know what your relationship with social media is like now versus when you first started. I thought you was real heavy on social media <laughs> at one point. Yeah. And I was like, y'all, she was like, I'm popping hey, out. Um, I'm popping out. I'm all that. I'm pop so what's yeah. your relationship like now? Um, yes, when I first started out, I exclusively built the business through social media, through like consistent consistency and showing up and posting every day and like doing all those things and that works, right? Um, and I think that that's so important. I think where I am in this season of my business now, my business requires, like the business requires more of me. I have a team now and like we're creating, like we're, we're just, it's like I had to go in a bubble, a creation bubble, so that's kind of the season that I'm in right now. But talking about systems, I have ads that are introducing me to new people every single day. So while I can't be out there posting or whatever, um, I have I do paid ads. And so my ads are doing that work for me. So just because you don't see me live right, right. doesn't mean that you don't see me. I'm still out here in these streets, but my systems are not doing work. Yes, I love that. What I'm most impressed about, you said two years you went to six figures. Yeah. And you have a million dollar business now. You reached a million dollar mark. Yeah. What are the key components that are required to get to six figures and then yeah. to scale to multiple six figures and then to a million? Ooh, yeah, it's been a journey. Okay, so when you're just getting started, right, um, I think it is a hustle. I think it is taste testing everything, especially when you're a makeup artist and there's so many different ways that you can be a makeup artist. And I think when you're just getting started, it's, it's taste testing all the things mm -hmm. so that you can get clear about what is your gift, what is your beauty perspective? What is the thing that makes you unique yeah. that people will know what to call you for? So for me, at first it was colorful, crazy, smoky, you know, crazy eyes, but then it turned into like refined, sexy, smoky eyes, and I really leaned into a signature. And I think that um, the grind, the hustle, the booking clients back, 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 that is, I think that's really good in the beginning because mm -hmm. you, um, you get better at your skill, you have the consistency, you're working, you're building your reputation, like all of that is important. And then inevitably, inevitably what happens is you hit a glass ceiling because when you're constantly selling your time for money, there's only, there's only so many faces that you can do, right? Like there's only so many people that can be in my chair. And so what I realized is like right at the six figure mark, I was like, okay, there has to be something else here. Cause I'm never gonna be able to beat faces to, you know, that, that next next level that I always knew that I wanted for my business. Yeah. So when you get to the point where you're like, all right, I'm, I'm stagnant, I'm stuck. Um, you start asking, okay, do I need to frame up? What, what am I doing wrong? That's a great sign that you're ready for your next level. And so for me, it was packaging my knowledge into digital products that I could create once and sell it over and over and over, over again. So it's replicating my expertise. It's replicating my perspective, my DNA. And that is what took the business to like scale, right? Mm -hmm. You can scale, you can't scale your services right. unless you franchise, <laughs> you duplicate yourself in that way. But um, other than that, you have to find a different way that you can like capture your DNA, and, like duplicate it and share it at scale. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Oh my God. So I just finished reading this. I think I read it. I read so many books, like back to back. I think it was in this book, The Subtle, the subtle Art of Not Giving Up. <laughs> yeah. And he said something to the effect of like, 
we kind of, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but it's something to the effect that like we kind of choose our pain based mm -hmm. off of like whatever we want to achieve. I, I want to know like what pain have you chosen to endure to yeah. be able to go to six figures, multiple six figures, and then a million because we have to sacrifice something. Have to sacrifice so what what are the things that you like? Okay, I'm gonna yeah. struggle through this, or I'm gonna choose to struggle, you know? Yeah. To reach that point. Um. I would say I, I, for a while, I was sacrificing time with my family, my friends, my husband. You know, when you're, it, when it, when it is just you in the business, it's just you in the business, right? And you have to do all the things. And so there was definitely a season in my business where it was like grind time, prime time. I'm building this. I'm doing that. I'm do, you know, doing all the things in the business. And so I chose the pain, the discomfort of. You know that for that season, yeah. um, but that grind allowed me to grow the business to where I could um, outsource and ha have a team and do all those things. So I think it's that. Okay, yeah. okay. What do you think are the attributes about you or your business that just like are so magnetic that people are so attracted to it? Um, I think where, especially in the beginning when I first started teaching, I think. The thing that made me different was it was like no fluff, right? I always just shared, like when I learned something, I shared it. When I tried something new and it worked, I shared it. When it didn't work, I shared that too. So, um, and I just didn't see a lot of people that were teaching the real business side. Like, okay, if you want to be a millionaire as big parts, what does that look like, right? I didn't, I didn't see that and so I just had to be it and create it. Um, and so I think in the beginning, that's what kind of made it magnetic. Because it just wasn't happening in the industry. Um, and I'm nowhere near like where I want to be. Like I want Beauty Mobile University to be a household name, like to be the Harvard of business schools for, or the, or the uh, Howard yeah. <laughs> of business school for beauty pros. And so, um, yeah, I think that was the secret sauce in the beginning. It's just, it was just so unique. Okay. Yeah. And I, I feel like when you get to a certain level in business, it's going to be moments where, like, people try you. Like, they <laughs> test you. I would love to yeah. know that you had, like, a, oh, they tried it. Because I had, I had one recently, but. Wait, yeah. no, what was your, see, my temperament is, like, I, I'm, I'm just. I'm chill. I yeah. didn't say anything, but they tried it, though. So, I, I talked about it on the podcast, y'all. So, I did a, a wedding. I wouldn't even do weddings. Right. Yeah. I don't even like doing weddings, but it was somebody that I only do weddings for people that I know. Mm -hmm. You have to ask me. I'm not going to volunteer. Um, just, so I did this wedding, and I had two other makeup artists with me. And um, how I know the bride is through one of my clients. So one of my clients was the bridesmaid. So we were catching up, like, girl, I ain't seen you in a minute. And she's telling me about all the drama behind the scenes with the bridesmaids oh, and everything. And I was like, which one is it? I knew it was her. <laughs> I knew it was messed up when she walked in. I knew, I knew it was all about her. But... The girl, they was having some kind of back and forth, whatever, about a sandwich girl. Because they provided food for us at the wedding. But we didn't get our food because we were just waiting on uh, the the bridesmaids and everything. But the girl had taken the sandwich girl and put it, it was my sandwich in particular. I don't eat certain things. So, but she had lied about it and put it like in her pocket or something. And the bridesmaids, they had already had like a little thing going on, like a little beef for some stuff that happened at the bachelorette party and stuff. And I was still the tea. So she was already like irritated with her. So when she found out she had a sandwich, she's like, well, you need to give me back the money and all this other stuff. So the bridesmaid says to her, because she was telling her that's for other people, you can't yeah. just do that. You already had your sandwich. Like, okay. <laughs> the girl said to her, so you want to take a sandwich from me to give to the staff? Not the staff. The staff. <laughs> and I Okay. My head, my, I did a slip. I was like, who's she going to help? Pretty right. much. Don't say nothing. We're here in a professional setting. You gotta set an example for these other makeup artists in here. But I was like, who does she, she know? I'm celebrating 111. Who she right. Just that. Yeah. So, you have any examples that they tried it. I can't think of anything juicy. I'm boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't think of anything juicy off the top of my head. Okay, okay. I'm gonna let you slide. I'm gonna let you slide. Yeah, I appreciate it. What is the real behind being a beauty mogul and mm -hmm. you know building a team, hiring? Do you have to let people go? Like, what is the yeah. real behind it? Because everybody wants to be a boss. Yeah. Until it's time to be a boss, because they don't know what goes into being a boss. And that check is the real. That check out the people's livelihoods. 
like you have to pay them out and all of that? Yeah, um, it's a learning process for me. I think 2022, or I can't believe 2022. 2022 for me has been the year of building the team. And so I've made a lot of mistakes in this journey. And I've realized that when you are the leader, it just requires another level of responsibility. Like you have to show up. Um, I mean, you just have to show up in a whole different way and set the example. So I've made tons of mistakes, including overhiring, mishiring, um, hiring people because I like them and not because they're right for the position. Um, hiring people too quickly, like just getting something, you know, because when you're first hired, you're just so excited. I mean, you don't know what a great applicant looks like until they're working with you, you're like, mm, not so much. Um, so yeah, I've had, a, I've had to fire people. My team has like turned over quite a few times and it's, it's you know, as a leader, it, it does fall on me, but I'm very happy that um, I've learned the things that I've learned. Siobhan's here, she's on my team. She's yeah. my lead coach. Um, she's amazing, yeah. So um, it's been a journey and you, you just, you just kind of have to be ready um, for people to look at you as the leader and the visionary of the, because of the, if you don't have a vision, how are you gonna get people to follow you? And when you are you know, hiring people, you really have to enroll them in your vision because they're carrying it out with you and for you. So yeah, it's been a challenge, girl, I'm still learning. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy that you mentioned Savon because like, that's one thing I forgot. I have so many of my Friends of Beauty podcasts yeah. alone. I have Siobhan was on the podcast. She's was yeah. on the podcast. Shantia was here earlier. Can I just tell you, did, tell, did she tell you how we know each other? Y'all yeah, from Jersey? No. She was one of our customers. It's just so crazy how small the world is. So Tara was one of our customers in the Harrison's company. And she came up to me today because I only knew her from seeing her orders come through. Um, and so she was like, oh, Tara. That is crazy. It is cra I'm yeah. telling you, the way things line up, it's so crazy how things come full circle. Did y'all vote Jersey? No. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. So. I always ask this question, okay. the legacy. What is the legacy oh, that you yeah. are leaving behind? Yeah. I wanna, first of all, I mean, the vision is big, right? So first of all, I just wanna transform the way that makeup artists do business. We get a bad rap for being unprofessional. We get a bad rap for not being up on the latest technology. And I'm a tech nerd too, like I love all things. Like I love funnels and website, like I, I love it all. And so I wanna empower makeup artists to um, have that and create a business where they can make money on demand. Um, six figures is their new normal. Seven figures is a real possibility for them. Like, I want that. Um, I also am really committed to helping women um, build wealth from their gifts, right? So as makeup artists, we are, you know, we, we love to pour into people. We, we love to make women feel beautiful. And so often we don't want to charge for that. Um, I don't want to charge for that. Like you were making people feel the most beautiful and loved and you know, whatever on that special occasion. And so I just want to help women take their passion and the thing that they love, um, which is makeup, and then turn that into an empire and build. Because when you, when you teach women how to fish, I mean, it just feeds an entire village. Her kids, her grandkids, yeah. it spreads the community. Women are so powerful. And so, yeah, I'm really committed to helping us get to the bag. I love that. <laughs> Anything coming up next for you? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, beauty pros, because it's not just for makeup artists, which is why we changed from makeup, makeup mobile right, university right. to beauty mobile university. Um, so I'm looking to help and serve makeup artists, hairstylists, estheticians, lash techs, anyone who provides beauty services, like let's turn you into a digital beauty mobile. Um, so we have that, we just launched a marketing membership where we basically like plan all of our members' social media for them. Um, and so that has been going amazing. Um, I want to do my own little hair, extensions collection or something like that so okay. I think we want to launch that maybe in the fall I don't oh. know okay. yeah um yeah it's a lot it's a lot happening I love it all yeah I love it for you I also want to invest in beauty startups too okay because I think that's like the next chapter I love it boss yeah. moves I love it <laughs> before you go I have to ask you the friends of beauty rapid fire let's go let's go no, I'm excited okay let's do this please know that I suck at rapid fire questions so I'm gonna try my best to like <laughs> 
things on one spot. Okay. What are the top three keys to your success so far? Um, my ability to pivot, because things go wrong all the time, and I have the ability to stay really calm and really focused and always like pivot to the next thing. So I think that is like my special sauce. Um, I would say uh, mindset. That has been key for me and like really, really, because you talk about imposter syndrome, baby, let me tell you something about it. Imposter syndrome is, can feel so real, right? Especially when your vision is so big and the people around you may not get it. But the one thing that I always keep in the back of my mind is like when God gives you a vision, he didn't give it to you on a conference call, right? Like your vision is for you. And it's not, it's usually not until you make it clear, you actually do it, that people will see it. Right, so you have to do it first. Um, so, yeah, I'm saying mindset, really developing that. Um, and then what else? What else? What else? Oh, yeah, I would say uh, 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 I would say clarity of vision. Clarity, clarity of vision. I'm nice. like, yeah. Okay. How do you measure your success? I measure my success by the level of freedom <laughs> that I have. Because for a long time, I had no freedom at all, and now I'm in a beautiful. Um, season in my life where my days are just like I get to create my days, I get to create, you know, the vision that I want for my life. I just moved into DC, like my dream apartment. Um, and so, yeah, freedom. Okay. Freedom. What's the best advice you've ever received? The okay. The best advice that I have ever received is that most people wait until the day that they have it in order to do it. So it's constantly like, man, when I have more followers, then I'm a, when I have more money, then I, when I have more time, right? And so you look around and it's a year later, it's five years later, and you ain't got no more money, you still busy, you have no extra time, right? Nothing changed. And so the best advice is like, you have to be it, right? You have to be the thing first. If you wanna be a millionaire, like you have to start thinking like a millionaire. You have to start making decisions as though you have millions now. And then you'll start to do those things, and then you'll have it. See, the way that most people go about building their life and building their career is have, do, be, right? Right. I'm gonna have it, then I'll do it, then I'll be it. Exactly. And I decided that I'm gonna just be it and do it so that I can have it. And that's been one of the keys. I love that. I have a whole episode of that. Oh, you do? I do. <laughs> I don't even know which one it is because it's pretty close to the beginning yeah. of uh, I, mean, I totally believe in that too. But that's when like the imposter syndrome kind of kicks in. Yeah. I have all this time. Okay, so you know why you have imposter syndrome, right? Wow. Or why people have imposter syndrome? <laughs> it's because you actually know more than you did when you first started. You see, when you first start something, you're all like excited about it. You're like, I'm about to kill it, whatever. And then you get in and you're like, oh, it's hard. Like this is a lot. <laughs> this takes a lot more than I thought, right? Okay. And so that's when imposter syndrome starts coming up because you're like, man. Actually do this? Am I actually cut out for this? Is this for me? Start questioning your purpose, right? But what I've learned is that it's in the valley that you learn the best lessons. It's when you're in the struggle that you, you know, you gain your might and your muscle. And so if you just ride it out, right, you're gonna come back up. You're gonna, you know, reach a peak. But most people quit in the valley, mm. right? So that's why you have this because you're still in the valley. Yeah. And you haven't gotten to that point where you have that clarity yet. Mm. But if you keep going, you will get the clarity. And then you will get the consistency and everything that you need. So, yeah. yeah. Aside from like keeping going, like what advice would you give to somebody that's in the valley to keep going? Because yeah. if you're in the valley, it's like I'm not gonna stay here. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not to be in the valley. I mean, we can we can think about this from like a, bi a biblical perspective. Because, I mean, like you know, God is not gonna give you all the tools that you need at the beginning of the journey. It's like you have to get in it in order to get what you need, you get it along the way, right? So if you're in the valley, the first thing is like the awareness that it's just the valley, it's just the season, it's not going to be always. But it's like every step, even a baby step, is progress, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I think of you as a great example of this. You, you never would have hosted events or had a podcast or whatever unless you went through that moment of not being clear. Mm -hmm. of not knowing what the next step is. You just took the next step and the clarity came, mm -hmm. right? It, it came through the progress. And so I, that would be my biggest, biggest advice. Is just know that you're not alone. Everybody has seasons. Everybody has challenges, right? And it's if you stick to it, if you keep going through it, if you understand that you're going to get, the clarity comes from the action, right? 
um, then you will get answers, right? And you'll be led to that next thing. Just like, had I not been fired, had I not lost it all, I never would have gone through the door of being a makeup artist. And it sucked to be broke. It sucked to have to go back to my mom like, I don't know, like that was not a fun season, but I needed that to set me up for that next thing. Absolutely, oh my God, so much that you just said. Okay. <laughs> What is a resource that helps you in your business that you can share with the friends of your community? I feel like everybody's saying so, but it's so true. If you keep hearing the same message over and over and over again, there has to be something there. And for me, it was classes, it was investing in coaching, it was all the things. Because here's the thing, like when you're building your business, you're going to pay either way. You're gonna pay either way. You're either going to, listen, you either gonna pay with your time to figure it all out yourself, um, and that's one of your most precious assets that you can never get back or you can pay with money. Uh, the great thing about money is you can get money back, but you can't ever get back time. And so I decided very early on, I'd rather have my time and just pay for the, <laughs> for the strategies of the code. So that for me has been the thing. So finding people who have already done what I want to do and just making an investment to learn um, their keys, their jewels, their gems, and then it's an actually, actually implemented it though. And actually implemented it. Because people go through all these programs <laughs> yeah. and buy all these courses and stuff and look at the stuff and might not look at it, but then they don't yeah. implement it, then they want to say it doesn't work. So you gotta right. actually like implement the stuff. Don't just get it. Yeah, the, the, the joining the thing, that's just the first step. <laughs> right. The last one, just fill in the blank. My name is blank, and the key to longevity and success is whatever you think it is. Yeah. My name is Tyana Robinson, and the keys to success and longevity is being, always being true to your passion, even when other people can't see your vision. Okay, I'll see you. Before you go, share your social media or however you want people to get yeah, you to find out about all this stuff that you have going on. You get bundles when you drop your bundles. I don't love it. Oh, look, y'all better act right. Okay, so uh, my, <laughs> my beauty part is on Instagram, at Tiana Robinson Beauty, that's where you can find links to all the things. Even though I'm not posted, I'm always in my DMs, so you're more than welcome to slide in my DMs. I always keep key about business and beauty. I'm a mean queen. I love a good gift. I am goofy as heck. I love TikTok, so you can always keep key in the DMs um, to make funny videos. And, um, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm coming back to YouTube. Okay. I'm coming back to the YouTube streams. So that should be debuting in May. Okay.